I want you to get this. That, that same spirit that was the, the same spirit of God that was in Jesus during the storm, the same spirit of God that was in Jesus during the storm that allowed him to go and lay down on a cushion and rest and sleep and have to be woken up in the middle of the storm. That same spirit of God is in you. That same spirit of God is in you. If you have put your faith in Jesus, if you have professed Christ as Lord, if you believe that God raised him from the dead, you become united with him and his spirit. That same spirit is the same spirit that was in Jesus when he was laying down asleep, resting in the middle of a storm. And, and we want to know what do we need to do? Like, what do I need to do to change my circumstances? What do I need to do to, uh, to, to feel or to be blessed? And, and on and on and on. And to be honest with you, I think there's something uh, that our culture has, uh, and I say culture, Christian culture, has really propagated that I believe plays into this thought process and this mentality. And I don't mean to be offensive. Let me say that up front. This is just something that I have a hard time with, and I'm asking you to consider it. And if you don't agree with me, that's okay. We can agree to disagree agreeably, and we can move on. But I'm asking you to consider this because I believe that this idea and this thought process and this initiative has created in us a sense of activity and needing to do something in order to receive something. Instead of asking yourself, what would Jesus do? Ask yourself, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? I think we need to change the question and we need to change the approach from what would Jesus do, what would Jesus do to who Jesus is? Because John tells us this in 1 John chapter 4. Because as he is, not because as he did, it's not what he says. Because as Jesus is, so are